Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about a couple of SEC matchups, A&M at Florida. I do have A&M in that game, but don't necessarily love either team at this very moment. And then we did Georgia at Kentucky. I just think this one's going to be a beatdown. I think Kentucky is reeling in. Georgia is Georgia right about now, so I'm not necessarily going to overthink that one. Let's get into a couple others. We have another SEC game for you, LSU going to South Carolina, the game day game of the week. I think they should be elsewhere, but that's all. That's just my opinion. I think Tulane at OU is another really, really fun one this weekend that we're going to break down here as well. But let's get into LSU at South Carolina first. LSU favored by a touchdown in this one. 49.5 is the over-under. This is a funny game. These are two very, very interesting teams that they're coming in kind of weirdly from two different directions although one is one or they're both one and one but they're coming in from two very different directions where South Carolina's played really good football a week ago played really bad football in week one LSU has played kind of somewhere in the middle of the road both weeks I think the the defense obviously still has big time questions the offense looks like an LSU offense right about now so I think it's one of those things where you're coming in I think Billy Napier has a lot of LSU fans asking questions Sam uh Shane Beamer will have a uh, will have a lot of Gamecock uh, fans asking questions if they don't win this one so it's going to be really interesting to watch the fallout from this one more than anything else, and the big uh, one to watch is obviously this pass rush against this O-line, and we'll get to that throughout this one, but Mazio Bennett is someone I want you guys to watch in this game. South Carolina has not had a lot of production from their outside wide receivers, and they're going to need more in this game. There's no doubt about it. The LSU defense is not great. The only real way they're going to be able to fully beat them is to stretch them out. They're going to have to be able to make sure that the DBs have to stay deep, that Sage Ryan and their friend and his friends cannot come down into the box and make it really, really tough for you to run the ball because then you really have no offense if you're South Carolina. So Mazio Bennett, a lot of these other guys on the outside just have to get going early in this game, or LSU just going to be able to stack the box, and South Carolina is going to be really tough sledding for a lot of this game against a defense that they should be able to take advantage of for the most part. And then on the other side, Nick Amonwari is a very talented player, was SEC Defensive Player of the Week last week and did just ridiculous things during that Kentucky game. But this is a very talented player, one of those guys that is going to be tasked with keeping up with Kyron Lacey for a lot of this game. And that's going to be a huge, huge aspect where Kyron Lacey is probably going to be, well, Harold Perkins is on that football field, but one of the best football players on the field on Saturday. And he's going to get a lot of that uh, load. So cannot wait to see how he handles it. And that's one of the big time matchups in this game throughout it. And then Caleb Jackson for LSU. You have to get this run game going if you're LSU. For whatever reason, they have not been able to get it going. Well, I know some of the reasons. The O-line has not been playing nearly good enough. And these running backs, although very talented and solid guys, not necessarily LSU level running backs. I think Caleb Jackson is a very dangerous player. He's going to have to take some steps forward. And then you have Josh Williams, who's a little bit more experienced, but not quite as athletic as you would like. So it's kind of a balancing act. You're going to have to do running back by committee. Hate that John Emery got injured because I think this would look a lot better with him in that room. But Finally, Harold Perkins. I think we all understand this one. Whenever you play Lenora Sellers, that very athletic linebacker becomes all that much important, uh, more important. So I don't know if this is a pass rush type uh, scheme for him going forward. I don't know if he's going to play a little bit more in the spy position and just make sure that uh, Lenora Sellers' legs don't become a factor. Whatever he does, he's going to have to be great doing it. And this defense is going to have to rely on him a lot. As we talked about going into the season, he might have more pressure on him than any defensive player in the entire country right about now. But let's get into how South Carolina can pull off this upset, and there's a lot of different things they can do. Obviously, this crowd is going to be into it. I didn't put that on here because I don't think it's going to be a problem to keep them in engaged. It looks like it might be a little bit rainy, so definitely something to watch there. But overall, if, these, if this fan base is who I think they are, they're going to be loud as can be on Saturday, and you're going to see a very fun spectacle in Columbia, South Carolina. But let's get into, you got to keep LSU's defense on the field. We know that LSU's offense is as dangerous as can be. We know that they have so many different guys that can cause you issues, and this defense already has a million different questions. So run the ball. Make it really, really tough for them to get off the field on third down because you have a third and three instead of a third and seven where Lenora Sellers has to throw the ball. And I think it's one of those things also— 
your defense is very, very dangerous on the other side. That being said, you have two edge rushers that have to be high effort, high intensity players every single down throughout this game. If Dylan Edwards and Kyle Kennard are not heard from, they're going to... Can, uh, South Carolina has no shot to win this game. Just plain and simple. They have to be big time players, and you got to give them a little bit of time to rest, a little bit of time to reset, and be 100 when they get in there to go on their reps because if they don't take them 100%, then these offensive linemen that are first round picks might just eat them alive. But also, be variable in this pass rush. I love Dylan uh, Stewart. I love Kyle Kennard. I think they're both very, very dangerous people. If you attack these uh, offensive tackles one-on-one, they're not going to win as much as South Carolina needs them to win. Just plain and simple. I think they're both very talented guys, and they made a lot of guys look dumb for, through the first couple of weeks. But the reality is, these are two first-round talents at offensive tackle. You're going to have to be a little bit more variable. So use twists, use stunts, use a ton of different things to get these guys matched up on a DJ Chester or get these guys matched up on a Garrett Dellinger and make it maybe a little bit easier for them to use those pass rushing skills the way that they meant to be used so it's kind of just being variable being uh, multiple at the uh, point of attack and making Nussmeyer not really know where Dylan uh, Stewart is going to come from on these pass rushes because if he just keeps coming right at Emory Jones or right at uh, Will Campbell I don't know how much of a success rate he's going to have and I don't know if it's going to be enough for South Carolina to get this one done and then finally finally Lenore Sellers athletic ability needs to take over this game this LSU defense has so many questions and if you can get them off platform if you can get them on plays that are a little bit longer a little bit more drawn out they're going to struggle. I can almost promise you that. So Lenore Sellers getting out of the pocket, making something happen with his legs, whether it's a throw or a pass, making this defense have to guard for just a couple of seconds more in this game is going to be absolutely huge and could get this crowd a little bit more involved if they see Lenora Sellers running free down the sideline. So it's going to be awesome to watch this, but they badly need that athletic ability from their quarterback if they're going to get this one done. And then some matchups to watch. I think, obviously, we talked about this offensive tackle group between Will Campbell and Emory Jones. It's going to be really hard to get through this group, but whatever they put together on the defensive side of the ball, it's going to have to be really, really nuanced and really aggressive, and then you also just have guys that could go at these guys and win a couple of battles. I don't think they're going to win quite as consistently as you need to, so you're going to have to be a little bit more variable, but every now and then, Dylan Stewart can probably win a matchup against one of these guys, which is outright terrifying in and of itself but moving on uh, the SEC uh, run game against the LSU front seven is huge the LSU front seven is not very strong right about now and South Carolina is going to attack you on, on in the run game there is really no other option for them in this game if they're going to get anything going it's going to be on the ground so LSU is going to have to be up for the challenge JVR Suggs and a lot of these other guys on the front seven are just going to have to be huge Harold Perkins included in that so it's going to be a lot of run game for South Carolina and if this LSU uh, lineman as well as linebackers do not come ready to play then they might just be able to run all over you with Lenora Sellers and Rocket Sanders and then finally Blake Baker against Lenora Sellers is going to be fascinating I'm so curious to see how he uses Harold Perkins how he uses Major Burns how he uses a lot of these other guys around his defense to combat the athletic ability of that kid because there's obviously a way to beat him keep him in the pocket make him be a pocket passer and you're probably going to have a lot of success but it's not all that easy to keep him in the pocket and make him a pocket passer because of his athletic ability so that's going to be a really really fun matchup and I tend to believe Blake Baker is going to win it just enough I think this LSU team has a million questions and I think they have to figure out a lot of it I also think South Carolina last week was just playing really good football at the right time. I'm not taking anything away from that win. It was very impressive what they did, but at the end of the day, I don't necessarily see it as a trend for South Carolina. I see it as a very, very good week of football. So I think LSU gets this one done. I think it's a very fun one, a little bit down to the wire, but I think LSU has enough offense to get this one done. Moving forward to Tulane going up to Norman to play Oklahoma, this is a really interesting game. Tulane coming off a game against Kansas State where they didn't quite get the win, but they proved that at the very least they belong. They proved that they can play on the same field with some of these players, so they're coming in with a little bit of confidence into this one. I think Tulane has some uh, defensive issues. Oklahoma has some offensive issues. So it's going to be a very, very interesting game to see how all of this plays out. And that over-under is one of the more confusing numbers in the entire market because 
no earthly idea which way this game is going to go, but Jackson Arnold's got to be able to get going in this one. There is no world where this team is going to be able to do much of anything in the SEC if they can't get that guy going, especially throwing downfield, and right now, the O-line's giving him no shot to do that. So a lot of things need to change in this game, and I think Deion Burks is going to have to get involved. When you talk about pushing the ball downfield, that's what Oklahoma wanted to do this season. That's why Dylan Gabriel is at Oregon right now, because he couldn't necessarily push the ball downfield the same way that Jackson Arnold can. Deion Burks is the guy they brought in to do that. Deion Burks is the guy they said he is going to be our deep threat. He is going to be the one that gets behind defenses while everyone else is chasing around Nick Anderson and Jaleel Farouk and all of these other guys. Problem is, those guys are injured now. So you're going to have to find a way to scheme this guy open. You're going to have to find a way to get the ball in his hands because he is as dangerous as can be with the ball in his hands, especially against a backhand that has some big time holes in two lanes. And then Billy Bowman is one of the best safeties in the entire country. One of those guys that plays so instinctively, so smart. One of those just impossible to avoid, really, defenders for Oklahoma. And I think in this game, there's so many wide receivers on that back end for Tulane that you're going to have to keep up with that he's just going to have to be a really good general of this defense. He's going to be really, he's going to have to communicate with that back end really efficiently. He's going to have to make sure everyone is aligned. And then when people aren't in their position, he's going to be the one that's likely called on to make those plays. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him to do that because Tulane is going to push the ball downfield. But if he can't make at least a couple of plays in this game, maybe the Tulane offense gets their feet under him a little bit more than we're expecting. And then Mario Williams. We have to talk about this guy making his way back to Norman for, I believe, the first time since he's left there. I I have to imagine the first time, and it's going to be really interesting to watch this one. This is a very talented receiver, has over 250 yards receiving this year so far, and he's one of those guys that can change the game on a dime. And Brent Venables and a lot of the OU players know that very, very well. They know how dangerous this guy is, and they got to make sure that they keep him under wraps because... He could totally change everything. He could play at a Power 5 school right now, but he just happens to be playing for the Green Wave, and they're coming up to Norman with a chance to get a big-time win. And then Patrick Jenkins is another guy to watch. This OU O-line obviously has had a lot of troubles, and this is the guy on the interior that could cause a lot of those troubles in this game. I think he's such a forceful guy, one of those that could really shut down this run game that has had a ton of trouble, and especially on that interior, the O-line is just all over the place. So if you can attack them in that point, then you're going to have a lot of success. And I think Patrick Jenkins is likely the guy that's going to have to do that for uh, Tulane. How can Tulane pull off this upset? Just get enough from the run game. You have so many dangerous players on that defense for Oklahoma that you're going to have to be able to pull Billy Bowman or pull Peyton Bowen down into the box and then be able to pass over top of them. There's no world where you're going to be able to take on this back end just one-on-one. I'm just being totally honest. I think you you might be able to find openings here and there. You're not, not going to be able to do it for four quarters. So pull uh, Danny Stutzman a little bit lower in the box. Pull Bully Bo- uh, Billy Bowman down into the box or Peyton Bowen who a little bit more fits that uh, mold but the reality is just get a little bit from Makai Hughes get a little bit from this offensive line and then do what you do which is spread these guys out and use these wide receivers that are just downright special to your advantage and then sell out on the pass rush that is the big time thing for me where you know how bad this group is you know that uh, OU has had troubles against pretty much everyone they face regardless of how bad that pass rush is and two lanes is not all that great they have two sacks on the entire season but Uh, Temple came in there and had three sacks on the day against Oklahoma so it's a reality where you can still attack them and still get openings and still get Jackson Arnold on the ground so I think this is really the only way to do it if you're going to let Jackson Arnold have even a little bit of time back there he's going to tear you to pieces I'm just being totally honest so you're going to have to make sure you get to him and the only real way Tulane's going to be able to do that is attack with a couple extra guys on a number of downs throughout this game and then finally just get a mistake get one mistake on that back into that defense and frankly if you're heating the guy up the way that you want to in this game by selling out against the pass rush you should be able to have a shot but the reality is if you can't get this going if you can't get a mistake and this OU fan base gets really involved especially if they get that big play downfield from Jackson Arnold you have no shot in this game. They want this uh, big-time play every single week, and they have not gotten it yet. If they get in this this game, this place will explode in a hurry. So you're definitely going to want to keep a cap on that. Some matchups to watch. The Oklahoma O-line just has to play well in this game. I don't know how they have not played at least a little bit better throughout this first couple of weeks, but 
this is a front seven that they should be able to handle, no doubt about it. And if they can't, then te uh, Tennessee's coming to town and they are going to tear you to pieces, just plain and simple. Um, and then the two lane wide receivers against this Oklahoma back end, we've talked about this a little bit. The two lane wide receivers are really the only even keel po uh, position that Oklahoma or that two lane has with Oklahoma. It's the only place where you look at two lanes guys and you feel like, okay, a couple of those guys could play on Oklahoma right about now. So you're going to have to utilize, uh, utilize those guys a ton throughout this game. And then finally, John Summerall against Jackson Arnold. How does he heat this guy up? How does he make him uncomfortable? And can he force a couple of mistakes from the kid? Because he wasn't necessarily able to all that consistently against Kansas State a week ago. But this is a dangerous O-line that could cause a lot of issues for uh, this Oklahoma offense if they do not come ready. But I am going to pick Oklahoma to win. I still think Oklahoma walks out of this one feeling a little bit frustrated with the offensive performance. I still think they have a lot of questions heading into that Tennessee game, but I do think they avoid a big-time upset here and are able to get that win, and then we'll see what happens in SEC play. They still have a ton of questions, and maybe they're answered this weekend, but I would... I would feel very confident to venture to say that it is not going to happen in terms of them being able to totally fix those problems. But I am picking them to win. It's going to be a very interesting game, but I do think OU gets it done at the end of the day. But let's take our second break here. And when we come back, we got to talk about these uh, old Pac-12 matchups that just got a little bit more interesting uh, last night. So we'll break it down right after this. So stick with us.